Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. It's time for another musical moment. And today I would like to talk about hymn meters. This is an aspect of the hymn that um, I ran out of time and didn't get to talk about the other week when we were talking about hymns. And when you look at a hymnal, at the bottom of a hymn, you're going to see a meter there. And the meter will be either represented by letters or by numbers. So I just wanted to walk through those today with you so that you know what those little letters mean at the bottom of the hymn. Sometimes you'll see LM at the bottom of a hymn, and that means that the text is in what we call long meter. There are eight syllables for each line. And long meter is the oldest and grandest of the hymns. St. Ambrose, when he wrote his Latin hymns, um, wrote them all in long meter. And they're majestic. They're usually used for texts that um, are uh, weightier and express grand things. So, for example, Old 100th. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's one of many examples of a hymn that's in long meter. Sometimes you see SM at the bottom of the hymn, and that means short meter. And short meter will have a rhythm that goes da 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 And probably the most famous example of a short meter hymn is Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb above his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems round on music but its own. It's a pretty effective meter because you have that grand sweep in the third line. And then sometimes you'll see CM at the bottom of the page, and that means common meter. And the reason why it's called common is because um, it's the most ubiquitous um, uh, kind of hymn meter. And many, many hymns, we have an embarrassment of riches with common meter hymns. So, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Eight syllables, six syllables, eight syllables, and six syllables again. So, da 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 In secular poetry, this is called the ballad meter, another reason why it's the common meter. Emily Dickinson wrote almost all of her poems in this common meter style. And they can, another unique thing about common meter is they can express all different kinds of texts. So, um, Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, a shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. It has that nice little pause in the middle that is makes them easier to take a breath and to breathe. They're, they're, they're more singable than long meter, because long meter you're always fighting to catch your breath a little bit. Um, you'll notice that Amazing Grace and um, O oh God Our Help in Ages Past are two very different kinds of tunes. So while they're the same meter, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to go, um, O oh God Our Help in Ages Past, Our Hope for Years to Come. You could do that, um, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Like, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. So. So just because they have the same meter doesn't mean that the um, texts are necessarily appropriate for every tune that's composed for common meter. Um, if you don't see those three letters at the bottom, those three letter sets, which are LM, SM, and CM, you might see some numbers there instead. And the numbers just mean that you're counting the syllables that are on each line. A very common um, set of numbers that you'll see is 7676. Seven, so seven syllables in the first line, six in the second, seven syllables in the third line, six syllables um, in the fourth. And what that is is basically just a spin on the um, common meter, and it's usually used to accommodate a poetic lines that end in a feminine way or an unaccented way. Feminine, I think, is the dated term for that. Um, but um, if you think of a an example like "Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of March has come." That eternal would be that feminine ending to that first line, the unaccented, the weaker ending to that first line. So um, common, the common meter doesn't quite work for that because, um, because that of that unaccented syllable that's thrown in there. Um, the last thing to think about with those meters are that the um, poetry can either be iambic 
or trochaic. And what that means is da 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 da. That would be five iams. Iambic pentameter is um, often associated with blank verse, Shakespearean poetry, um, Shakespearean drama. Um, and the other one is the um, trochaic, which is da 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 da. So you have a, something like, come ye faithful, raise the strain. That would be an example of um, trochaic meter. And lead on, O king eternal, the day of March has come. That's an example of iambic. So there are um, both of those hymns that I just mentioned are 7676, seven, but you couldn't match the tunes with either one of those because one is strong weak and the other is weak strong. Just imagine what that would sound like. Lead on, O king eternal, the day of March has come. It, it just doesn't work. Um, you know, or um, come ye faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. It sounds so much better when we have, come ye faithful, raise the strain, and we associate the correct um, uh, poetic foot with the correct tune. Those accented syllables have to match up. So that's the takeaway from today. Look at the bottom of your hymn next time you sing a hymn and um, soak in whether it says CM or 7676, and now you know what that means. I'll see you again next week for another musical moment.